I often say that it's much better to watch a movie 10 times than to watch 10 movies once. Because it's by watching films repeatedly that you will discover what's really the underlying engine. And I, I experience that myself. Films that I like re-watching, I suddenly discover things that I'd never seen before. A film as simple as Jaws, that my own mentor had told me, it's a story of a sheriff who's afraid of water and he has to overcome his fear in order to protect the town. Well, I watched that film a few times and I discovered that maybe that's not what it's about. Because you can argue that the fear of water is not a moral issue. What's going on in, in, in Jaws, if you really pay attention, there are several instances where we see that the sheriff has not taken responsibility. It starts in the first scene at home in the kitchen. His son comes in with bleeding hands. He's been playing on the swings, the, the sheriff says, but I told you were dangerous. I told you not to play on the swings until I fixed them. So he had not fixed them, knowing they're dangerous. Then later on, when there's a shark out there, what does he do? First, he says, people don't go on in the water. Let's close the beaches instead of dealing with the issue. And, you know, within, you know, the, the, the value system of this film, it means killing the shark. In Australia, you wouldn't do that anymore. You put shark nets out. But anyway, so he doesn't do that. He doesn't take responsibility. And then right before he goes into the ocean at the halfway point of the film, the midpoint reversal, when, you know, he's willing to change his action, the last words he says to his wife are, don't use the fireplace in the den because it's dangerous. So there's another instance where he had not taken his responsibility. So this is a story of a man who has not taken responsibility and now needs to go one step further and overcome his own fears to deal with, with the issues at the root. Another film I recently watched again was The Third Man. The Third Man is in a way similar to Annihilation or what Annihilation had could you know should have been it's the character there's a story of a character who's facing their almost literal shadow so holly uh, played by uh, joseph carlton in in um, the third man he is too holy he is he's a very um he's a goody two-shoes he's a bit bland he's a bit boring and what he needs is a bit of you know edge he needs to be a bit naughty now, Harry Lyme, played by Orson Welles, is the extreme opposite. He is evil. He takes risks. He goes out so far that he actually puts people's lives at risk. So what, what we have here is the hero meeting the shadow, and he needs to embrace a little bit of the shadow in order to become a, a full man. And we see in the course of that film, particularly at the halfway point, uh, Holly knocks on the door of Harry's girlfriend, and she thinks it's Harry. He sounds like Harry, so he's kind of becoming Harry. And I'm afraid I'm going to spoil the story, but in the second half of the film, Harry comes in and the two face one another. So now Holly is facing his shadow, is facing his darker version, his darker self. And in order, in a very traditional Jungian sense, in order to embrace the shadow, he needs to kill the shadow. It's like, you know, shine a light on the shadow. You, you, identify, you accept the dark side and you embrace it. And that's what happens in The Third Man. It's fantastic. I love it.